Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the platform specific series of my MIPS assembly programming tutorials. In the platform specific series, we we focus on a specific system, this time the N64, and we sp focus on a specific task that relates just to that platform. So today we're going to be looking at the joystick. So um, each time it's only going to be one system and one very focused topic that is only related to that hardware. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to read in the, the contents of the joysticks. Now you can see that we've got some data on the screen here. This is a memory dump and the memory is being read in from the joystick hardware. Now the joystick on this system are mapped to my keyboard. So if I press various keys here, so if I press, um, I think these are the up, down, left and right here. And we've got some fire buttons here and that's the start I think. And um, then over here we've got the analogs. Now if you look at the numbers you'll see that all of these changes are occurring to the top line here at the analogs. So I'm pressing the various directions here and you can see that is affecting those analogs. And then we've got, I think this is the C pad. So we've got all of these and these are all affecting these bytes here, these four bytes here. Now these four bytes on the left here, I believe these are basically initialization status. So detecting if a joystick is inserted and so on and so forth. So these eight bytes here all relate to the first controller. Now you'll notice here that the first joystick is marked as 0401 here and, and that is it, it seems like the other three joysticks aren't connected which is weird because I thought they were but I guess the um, settings are saved in the um, registry and my other machine is set up differently. Anyway if we close this down and restart it hopefully now we will have a total of four joysticks. Yeah, now you can see that the, the values there have all changed and so now if I press the other keys that I've mapped to joysticks on my keyboard that is the equivalent of joystick 2's directions that is the equivalent of joystick, some of them are the equivalent of joystick 3, looks like left and right are messed up there. And there is joystick 4, so there we go, that's joystick 4 there. Now, as I say, basically these, these bytes all relate to a different joystick, and so we can control all four of our joysticks. Now, the remaining gun bytes here don't relate to a joystick. I don't know if they're unused in the current status, or if it's related to the bubble memory cards or something. As I say, it certainly isn't related to the joystick, which is all we're looking at today. So let's go over to our source code, and let's take a look at the code that makes up today's example. So we're looking at this N64 joystick example here. Now, we're not going to go over the code with regards to graphics and things. If you please see the simple series if you need to understand that. What we're going to look at today is the actual work we need to do to get the joystick working. Now, we're going to be using a device known as the PIF. Now, this is a piece of hardware on the system. I, I couldn't find a specific explanation for what PIF stood for. Some people seem to say it was peripheral interface, or some people said parallel interface, and other people didn't seem to think it meant either of those things. So we're just going to refer to it as the, to it as the PIF. The PIF basically is sort of the sort of core hardware in the system that um, I believe it has some stuff to do with copy protection. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize the PIF and we don't, if we don't do this it, it apparently will um, lock up on us very quickly. So basically what we need to do is we just need to write the fixed value of 8 to the stati status register at this address here. And so we're loading the base into A0 here of um, BFC007CO and then we are writing the value 8 to that offset there and that's just to get everything so that it's going to work correctly. Now when it comes to actually working with data to and from the PIF, we're actually going to use something referred to as the serial interface, which is abbreviated to SI. Now this is kind of like a DMA copy. We basically specify a source ad address and a destination address, and we can either copy data to the PIF or read data from the PIF in one block. Now we always read and write the same amount of data each time. It's, it's always this entire block of data. So we need to make sure our the data that we're going to use is the correct size for the PIF. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to initialize the PIF. Now, we basically need to send a sequence of words here, and we've got this PIF init here, and we're going to send these two bytes to each of the controllers to initialize them. So there's four pairs of words here for the four controllers. We then have an end command, FE, and then six zeros here, followed by a zero word after that. And the last word in these bytes here is just the value 1 here. And that is the value that is going to be written to the status register. So this is the valid data for our initialization. We've aligned this to an 8-byte boundary. And we're going to send this to the PIF. Now the way we do this is with the serial interface at this address here. But there is a bit of a catch. Now um, when our program is running, uh, the address it's going to be running at is going to be defined around this address here. 
Now that is the address that the system actually sees when it's running the code. However, that isn't the actual hardware address. There's, there's various layers of caching and things to the memory and the different addresses, the different addresses we address have that caching enabled and disabled. So for example, if we look at our memory map here, the, these addresses basically are the same address. It just depends on what kind of caching and things are applying. And so what we're going to need to do for our code today is we, we're going to have to take the address we want to work with, this PIF and it, and then we're going to have to convert it to a physical address. And the easy way we can actually do that is just to mask that using an AND with this mask here, which will basically convert it to a physical address. So you're going to see these ANDing with that address there. So A0 is going to point to the serial interface that we're using to transfer our data. We're wanting to transfer from PIF and it. We're then converting that with this AND here to a hardware address, and we're writing that to offset zero within the serial interface. And that is the DRAM address register. That is the address that we're wanting to work within, within RAM for either read or write. What we want to do next is we want to specify our destination. And so we're loading that address here. That is the address of the PIF RAM. That's the controller RAM. We're then, again, converting that to a hardware address there. And then we're writing that address to the address offset by 16 in A0 here. And that is the SI PIF address write register. This will write 64 bytes from the specified address here, this address here, to the specified destination address. Now, this is the destination address here. And writing to this destination address register will initialize the transfer. And the transfer is always the same size each time, which is why we need to make sure our source data is the correct size. So that has now initialized our joystick. And our joystick is now in a usable state. However, we haven't got any data back yet. So what we've got here in our test code is just an infinite loop. And all we're going to do is we are going to read in the status of the buttons and then load them into memory. And then we've got a memdump command, which is showing them to the screen. So we need some data and some memory to actually show the, red, the value of each of those directions. It's the same amount of data as before, so the same 16 words, same 64 bytes. And basically what we've got here is a sequence of zero bytes here. Now this is in our ROM cartridge specified, but the ROM cartridge is actually transferred to RAM before being executed. So um, we're actually, we'll actually be running from RAM here and we can actually write to this equivalent label in the final program. So these zero bytes here will be overwritten once we've run this command with the actual status of our joysticks. And this is what we're showing to the screen in our example. Now, once again, we are going to use the serial interface to do our work. So once again, we're specifying the address space of the serial interface. And once again, we're going to have to use physical address masks to convert our um, running addresses to the physical addresses for the um, SI to work with. So we are specifying this time our destination address, but we're writing it to the exact same register as before, the SI address register. That's the exact same address register as we used when we were writing before. We're using the same one now for, for the final read operation. So it can specify either the source or the destination. And what that register's value does depends on the following command. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use again the PIF RAM. We use the PIF RAM here when we were writing our parameters. We're now using the same address when we're reading the parameters back from the PIF RAM. We're again masking it to a hardware address here. But this time, rather than writing it to address 1,0 in hexadecimal offset to the SI registers, we're writing to offset 4 in the SI registers. And that is the PIF address read 64 byte register. So this will specify that, firstly, it will specify that the address we just wrote is the source address, but then that the, addr the address we wrote to DRAM address reg is the destination this time, whereas before it was the source. And so this will read in all of our registers. So basically, you can see here, that is how we are able to get all of our directions onto the screen here. So you can see here, we've got all of those nice directions we're reading in. And of course, um, here we've got raw data here. So you know you need to understand how to interpret that. Uh, the, the direction buttons are probably pretty straightforward, but you know, things like the analogs, it can get a little bit confusing. Uh, if you go to my website, I do have a, a sort of summary here of the various buttons in the bytes that are um, shown there and what they what they mean so you can check that out anyway that's how we can read in from the joystick and um, we can then do whatever we want with it so of course you can go to my website and download the example today and have a go with it yourself if you want to make your own things if you want to see 
an example I've written though, it, please um, like and subscribe because next time we're going to look at an, an example in the simple series. We're going to move a character around the screen, a simple little bitmap. We're going to move it around the screen with the joystick. So if you need to see the see a more practical example than just numbers on the screen, please then um, follow along for that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.